Hey everyone, Josh here from Fresh Start Customs. Coming to you today with um, a video on how to edit a photo for laser engraving. Um, essentially what I do for the Glowforge that I have. Um, I'm gonna walk you through on basically how to turn it black and white, um, how to edit some of the contrast and shadows. And this is definitely subjective. You can do uh, your own editing style. Um, and you can actually edit it in different variations based on different materials or how you want it to pop or stand out more. So definitely take this with a grain of salt. This is gonna be um, how I do it. If you like the different um, photos that I do um, and different shadowings that I do, this will show you a good look at what I do to do that. So let's go ahead and um, get started here. Um, I know this is a pretty important thing that a lot of people like to know how to do, and I'm sorry that I didn't get to it earlier. Um, just a lot of other stuff come, came up, so let's go ahead and get started here. So essentially, I went ahead and opened this regular um, photo here, and I took this photo while I was on a trip in San Francisco. Um, so it's a rather large photo um, so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna make sure that we have it the right size that we want first so I'm gonna go to file and choose new and I want it to be seven inches wide by four inches high and um, a resolution of 300 I always leave my photos at 300 and then I always put a transparent background so you know um, what you're working with if you have multiple layers and then I go ahead and click OK and once you have it here, um, uh, this is the new canvas that we're going to be using. And we're going to come back here to the photo, and then I like to use my move tool, click and hold, and drag it right onto this canvas here. And as you can see, like I said earlier, it is a large photo, so we're going to have to shrink this down. So all, what I personally do, there's probably easier ways to do it. I go to edit, and then free transform. And then there's different ways that you can do it. If you don't want to zoom out, you can just drag it to the corner here and then um, shrink it multiple times, but I don't like to do that. What I do is I hold down the control key on your keyboard and hit zero, and that's on a Windows computer. Um, that zooms it out to show you the full size of that photo. Like I said, it's huge. So what we're gonna do is come down to this bottom corner and hold shift on your keyboard and then click on that bottom corner when your arrows look like that. Um, and then we're gonna shrink it down. And as you can see, it's not gonna line up with the exact size that I want. So I'm gonna have to lose some of those um, pixels in the image. So I'm gonna go right about here and let these hang off. And I'm gonna click the move tool and choose apply to apply that transformation. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift this image over just by clicking and dragging to this edge. That way we get rid of some of these leaves, but I still want the leaves in this image. And um, if you don't remember, I did use this image in a different video that I did. Um, so you can check out that other video. I'm not going to actually print this off today. Um, I used the inverted photo of this. So I'll show you both the regular editing and then how to invert at the end. So let's go ahead and get started here. Um, so what we have now, now that we have the correct size that we're gonna print and cut is uh, four by seven. Um, we're gonna go up to image and then go down to adjustments. And then we're gonna go to black and white. And then from here, um, just move this uh, if the box shows up here, just move it off to the side so you can see your image here. Um, and then you can kind of do some adjustments right here. Um, you don't have to because you can do that in the um, raw camera filter that we're going to be using later on. But I always like to do some pre-adjustments here. So I'm going to lighten up um, some of these reds here. Um, probably right about there. And then we're going to lighten up some of the yellows that are going to be in the leaves. Um, and then I'm going to lighten up some of the greens that are going to be in the leaves too. And as you can see over here is what was changing as I was changing. Now um, I'm going to do cyan next. So you see the sky right here. 
Uh, I'm going to essentially drop that down to get rid of this guy altogether. Um, that's way too far. So let's go ahead and go up to right about here where pretty much everything is white in the sky. And you can do the same for the blues a little bit. Adjust that a little bit. And as you can see, that was this section here where the sky's uh, reflections were bouncing off the building. Um, and we'll just reduce this just a little bit. So essentially that looks pretty good so far. We're gonna go ahead and just go with that to save some time here. Um, I know everybody likes shorter videos. So let's go ahead and hit Control Zero again to zoom in so you can see the entire image. And from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go into Filter and then choose Camera Raw Filter. And it gives you a nice little preview here of what's going on as long as you have this preview button checked. Um, while you're doing this. So what I always like to do is I like to start with shadows and I like to drop those all the way. Um, that way it get, gets rid of any unnecessary shadowing that might mess up your engravings. And um, keep in mind that you may need some of that shadowing on certain photos. But I don't think we're going to need it on this photo. So we're going to drop those. And then with the contrast, um, you can increase this and this will give you a more of a sharp effect. Um, it looks like I can go all the way up with this one. It looks pretty nice. And then what you can do from here is you can, um, that's already looking pretty good, but what you can do from here is you can actually adjust some of your, um, your blacks a little bit. As you can see that popped a little bit here. Um, and Whenever I say go all the way down, I always mean to the right if I say down. And if I say up, it's to the left. But technically, that's reverse because um, it's negative and positive. But you can see the sliders here on what I mean. Um, and then from here, you can go ahead and adjust some of the whites if you want to. Um, but I'm going to just leave that at zero. And you could adjust the contrast. You see how much that pops here. I'm going to maybe... Um, I guess go to the right or increase in this section like I say I always say it backwards here um, I'll probably go to right there that looks all right and then um, with uh, with this um, this looks pretty good so far I'm gonna just go ahead and add a little bit of clarity which makes it a little bit sharper I'm not gonna go too crazy with it I'll probably go up to let's say about 20 yeah, probably 23, 25. Yeah, let's go to 25. That just increases the sharpness a little bit, which helps the engraves. Now, sometimes you don't need that, especially like if you're gonna use faces that might mess up the faces in the photo. So clarity is subjective. Um, like I said, all of this is really subjective. It's um, what you think is gonna look good, um, especially based on the material that you're gonna use. Um, and then you want to keep in mind like all these leaves you see how much they pop here compared to over here um, That's kind of what we're looking for is different layers that are gonna pop out better um, um, And then like this building is a lot lighter than this building. That's what we're wanting So this is essentially looking pretty good. I might increase the blacks just a little bit That's gonna be a darker engrave. Everybody wants it to be lighter most of the time um, if you're going to be doing it for like a lighter colored wood um, so you can always incre um, increase that exposure a little bit more if you want to um, let's see here so that's looking pretty light we'll go ahead and just go with this for now um, and this is actually looking pretty good for the laser already um, so if you're happy with this you can definitely go with this um, if you're not happy with this, with um, how close the whites are here from this building to the whites here, you could actually manually come in and click the burn tool here. And you can click and hold and you see how it gets a little bit darker there, wherever I go. You could actually give your own custom shadowing in the picture. Um, so let's say I want this to be brighter right here and I'll just leave that alone. And then darker right here where I clicked. and then. You see how there's these two tones here. You could actually make the uh, the building a little bit more shadowy here by clicking multiple times. 
to give it a closer um, a closer shadow there and you could go through this as much as you want so if you want it to match you could definitely go through it over and over until you get cl close enough for it to match this like I said this is just me quickly doing this um, and this is where all the time comes into play so if you want to get really detailed you can go ahead and zoom in um, and you can do all the manual editing if you want to in that building if you wanted to and you can go through and burn stuff um, to make it darker and now if you want and let's say you made a mistake you can go back to that burn tool click and hold and go to dodge and then that'll make it lighter so you see how it's making it lighter there and you can go through and you can do your own shadowing now another potential option would be um, let me go ahead and zoom back out here um, like I said this is just a quick tutorial here as quick as possible I know it's gonna get a little bit longer so I'm sorry for that I just wanted to give you as much detail as possible here um, so let's say this looks pretty good I'm gonna just get that back to normal because I like it like that so we'll go ahead and just do that um, I know there's a lot of touching up that my instincts wants to do but I'm not gonna do that just for sake of time here so you could definitely do that and then you could do different sections too. So let's say um, you grab your rectangle, rectangular selection tool and you select this building right here. Um, it's almost squared off. And like I said, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna edit or cut that out. Um, you can definitely do that on your own. But let's say we wanna just edit this building and these leaves and I have that selected. You can do the same thing with the camera raw filter I usually call it raw camera filter so if I did that earlier I apologize and now you can see just this section is selected so then you can go through and you can make this building lighter with the leaves lighter if you wanted to and you can add some contrast again if you want to um, and then we can make like the highlights um, pop a little bit more so that's going to be a pretty white building compared to what it is now but I'm going to just click OK so you can see how this building changed and nothing else changed since we had that selected so I'm gonna hit undo so you can see the original and then redo so you can see the edit so you can see like if you don't like those darker shadings and you want it to be wider so you see more of the wood in the white section you could go through and manually edit each one of these buildings if you want um, so that does actually look pretty cool but you're not gonna have as much of a difference between this back building and this building as you would here um, but we're gonna go ahead and just leave it like this for now uh, with this new edit here um, and essentially like I said you can go through and do a lot of the manual e manual editing um, with shadowing with uh, the burn tool um, like I said you can just go across the edges a little bit that way you make sure the white can tell the difference between the glow forge and the buildings and um, now that I have that all edited all you gotta do is save it so I'm gonna go ahead and file save as and we're gonna go to documents and I'm gonna just turn this into um, you can either save it as a JPEG or a PNG. Um, usually when I import into Illustrator, I save it as a PNG. Uh, that's totally up to you either way, doesn't matter in this case. Um, so what we're gonna do is we'll just, uh, I'm just gonna name it SF and hit save and then hit okay. So that one's gonna be for wood essentially and I'll get to that in just a second. I wanted to show you like in the previous video that I did if you've been following along um, it's been a few videos back I did the the black or the white tile with the black spray paint on it um, of this exact photo here so if you wanted to do this on white tile with black spray paint or on acrylic you're gonna have to come over to image choose adjustments and then go to invert and as you can see this inverted all the black and white completely opposite so now essentially if I have a full um, tile that's spray painted black but it's white underneath um, what it's gonna do is it's gonna 
etch off all this black section, leaving white where it etches. And then that's essentially going to make it look like this when it's done. Um, so all the black areas will still be black. So you got to make sure you invert that um, if you uh, if you want it on acrylic or um, tile that's spray painted black there, like white tile spray painted black, um, or any other color that you choose. But um, so we're going to do with the original image here like this for wood we're just gonna say that we're gonna be using it for wood which most people will do photo engraving on and now um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open up that file that we just saved um, right here we're gonna go ahead and open this with um, let's see here and we're gonna go down to open with an illustrator so this is the um, four inches high by seven inches wide photo that we had. Um, we're gonna go ahead and click and hold. And I always drag and drop it into the um, 12 by 20 um, file on Illustrator here that I have set up. You don't need this. This is just how I like to do it. And now, as you can see, if I actually go down to the zero point here, um, it's seven inches wide by four inches high, um, if I get it perfectly on zero. Um, let's see here. And I'm gonna take off the snap to grid because that gets annoying sometimes. So um, now that that's essentially four by seven, if you wanted to cut this photo out and not just engrave it, then you have to add a cut line. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the rectangle tool here and then we're just gonna click anywhere in the white section. And then the width is gonna be seven inches and the height is gonna be four inches. So that makes it super easy and we're gonna change the line to red here. And, um, or in this case, that is technically the stroke uh, depending on how you want to say that. I always just say line. Um, so as you can see, I just moved that over top of this image and you can highlight them both and go over to the align tool here and click center both ways so you make sure it's completely centered. And now that you have this selected, um, what you, the last thing that you're going to have to remember to do is click your click just the photo in the center here and we're going to go to object and click rasterize and then click OK. And there you go. All you gotta do now is save this as an SVG file. So you can go to File, Save As, and then change it to SVG. And then you can title it whatever you want. Um, so in this case, we'll just title it SF again. And then hit Save. And then make sure you have the same settings here. Um, these are the settings that I use. Um, this could be subjective too, um, but sometimes this could throw the line out of whack if they're not correct so I always leave it like this and then hit OK and there you go you just saved an SVG file that you can open in Photoshop and cut out um, and have it laser engrave where it looks great um, so I hope this tutorial helped you out sorry it took a little bit to get to this a lot of other stuff came up in the meantime um, so yeah, we'll talk to you guys next time. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet. Um, I plan on keep doing this as long as I can. Um, I've got a cool um, coloring resource video coming up um, as soon as some of the items come in the mail here um, that I went ahead and took time to that we're going to test out. And I hope to do that video sometime soon. So we'll catch you guys next time. And uh, thanks again for watching.